Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn about plotting using functions built into the pandas library for Python. Now data visualizations are one of the most powerful tools at your disposal for exploring data and communicating data insights. The pandas library we've been working with includes some basic plotting capabilities to let you create a variety of common plots using data frames. The pandas plots are built on top of a popular Python plotting library called matplotlib. So for more advanced plotting functionality, you might need to use the matplotlib library on its own or use some of the other packages built on top of it, such as Seaborn. But for this lesson, we're just going to learn the basics of plotting with Python. So pandas will be enough for our purposes. We're going to start off by loading in a few packages here. So we're going to get NumPy and pandas as usual. We're also going to load in matplotlib because the pandas plotting functions rely on it. So we're going to load those. And for the data set for this lesson, we're going to use the diamonds data set. It's just a data set of a bunch of different diamonds with various quality levels. Now for our first plot, we are going to look at the histogram. We've actually seen some histograms already in some of the data cleaning and exploration videos, but now we're going to go more in depth about how to make them in pandas. Now a histogram is a univariate plot, meaning it's a plot that only displays one variable. And what it does is it takes a numeric variable and groups the observations into bins and then displays the number of observations that lie within each bin. The purpose of a histogram is essentially to visually display and then get a sense of the distribution of a numeric variable. So we're going to create a histogram of the diamonds data set of the caret variable, which is the size of the diamond, using the pandas.hist function. So to do that, we take our data frame diamonds, we run dot hist on it for histogram. The first argument is the column you want to plot. We are going to be plotting the caret column. And these other options are just setting the size of the figure and the color. So you don't have to include those, but we are going to for this lesson. And when we run this, we should get a histogram of caret weights. And the resulting plot shows us that in general, diamonds tend to skew to the smaller side. So small diamonds are fairly common, but as you get bigger and bigger, they get relatively more rare. Now note that the width of the bins in this histogram are pretty wide, so we don't have that many different categories that we can even compare here. We could rerun our histogram and make more bins to get a finer grained look at what the distribution looks like. So let's try doing that below. We're going to rerun diamonds.hist, again the caret column, but we're going to add in a couple extra arguments to the bottom here. We're going to say bins equals 50, that will split up the data into more bins, and we're going to limit the range of the plot to be only up to 3.5 carats because there are a couple outliers that kind of stretch out the plot. So I'm just doing that to get rid of those. And when we run this, the resulting histogram has a lot more bins and shows us a finer grained look at the data. Next, we are going to learn about how to make box plots. A box plot is another type of univariate plot for summarizing a numeric variable. It's similar to a histogram and then it gives you a sense of the distribution of a variable, but somewhat better at showing you outlier values. And it also gives you a sense of some key statistics, such as the median and interquartile range of a distribution. The interquartile range is the middle 50% of the data. So from the 25th percentile to the 75th percentile. So we'll show how to run a box plot here. We're going to do it on the caret column again. So all you do is pass in your data frame, run dot box plot on it. Then for columns, we'll pass in caret again, and this will create our box plot. So after we've run this, what the box plot is showing us is this box here of the box plot is the middle 50% of the data. So the 25th percentile is the bottom and the top is the 75th percentile. This middle green bar is the median. So 50% of the data lies within this box. And then the great majority of the data lies within the two black bars at the bottom and the top. Anything outside of that, such as all these circles above the top bar, could be considered outliers or at least values that are quite a bit above the typical value. And you can also create side by side box plots, which make several box plots split up by a categorical variable. So you can investigate the differences in the distribution of the numeric variable based on which category it lies within. 
So I'll give an example of doing that below. We're going to create a new box plot of diamond price and split it by a categorical variable, the clarity of the diamond. So this will create several box plots of the price, one for each clarity level. And when we run this and scroll down, we can see that we have created a different box plot for each clarity level. So this box plot shows us that the price of a diamond varies quite a bit within the clarity levels. Next, we will consider density plots. A density plot is very similar to a histogram in that it shows the distribution of a numeric variable. The difference is that it estimates the distribution with a continuous curve instead of grouping things into bins. To create a density plot with pandas, you can take a pandas series, then run dot plot on it and use kind equals density. So basically what we're gonna do here is just extract the caret column, which is a pandas series, run dot plot on it, say kind equals density, and then just set up some arguments to set the plot size. And when we run this, we will get a density plot of the caret variable this time, which gives us a sense of the overall shape of the caret weight distribution. Now, so far, all the plots we've made have been related to looking at numeric variables. For categorical variables, you can make a bar plot, which is essentially a visual representation of the information that would be in a table. So for instance, if we made a cross tab or table of the clarity column, we could see the counts of the different clarity levels. Now looking at a table of values like this, it's not particularly easy to immediately get a sense of the scale between the different categories and how much bigger some of the categories are than another. To do that, we could use a bar plot as a data visualization, which makes the relative differences between categories of counts much easier to immediately see. So to create a bar plot of this data, we can actually just take the table we created, run dot plot on it, and use kind equals bar. That will generate a bar plot based on the table data. So when we run this, we see that we essentially have just recreated the data in our table, but as a plot, which can allow for quicker comparisons, like which category has the lowest count and the maximum count. If we had a two-dimensional table, we can actually still make a bar plot from it. It'll just be turned into a stacked or grouped bar plot, which means that within each of the categories, things will be separated out based on the other category. So I'll give an example of doing that. We're going to make a new table here that is going to be showing the clarity of the diamonds and the color. Now to create a bar plot from our two-dimensional table, we can use the same construction as before. We pass in the table, run dot plot on it with kind equal bar. And we're just gonna add this extra argument here, stacked equals true, which will make it be a stacked bar plot. So when we run that, the shape of the bars is exactly the same as before, but each bar is now color coded or stratified by the colors. Another way of representing the same information is to have a grouped bar plot instead of a stacked bar plot. With a grouped bar plot, instead of having all of these colors stacked one on top of the other, they'll be side by side, so it's easier to tell the differences between them. For instance, right now, it's pretty hard to tell whether this orange bar is bigger than, for instance, this purple bar. But if we make a side by side bar plot, we might be able to tell that difference. So let's make one of those as well. To do a side by side bar plot, all we have to do is change the stacked argument to false and it will not stack them and we'll make it side by side instead. So we can see now that we have a side by side bar plot, we can actually tell the difference between those categories we were looking at before. It's easy to see now that the orange column for E colored diamonds is taller than the purple column for the H colored ones. Now when you want to investigate the relationship between two numeric variables, you can use a scatter plot to do that. It simply plots the value of one variable on the x-axis and the other variable on the y-axis, plotting a point for every single record. So we'll give an example of making a scatter plot. So to create a scatter plot, take your data frame, diamonds, run dot plot on it, and use kind equals scatter. Then for the x and y arguments, you want to pass in the names of the columns you want to use for the x and y axes. In this case, we're going to put caret on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. This should allow us to investigate the relationship between the caret weight and the price. So when we run this, 
we see we have created a scatter plot of all of these diamonds. There are over 50,000 of them. And it does seem that there is some non-random relationship between carat weight and the price of a diamond, because we can see here that diamonds that are very small, none of them cost very much. Any diamond that's less than, say, half a carat is not very expensive, but the price really starts ramping up once you get to around one carat diamonds. Scatter plots are useful for exploring numeric variables when you don't know the relationship between them. On the other hand, with time series data, where you have a numeric variable that varies over time, there is a known relationship between the time that a measurement occurs and what the measurement is. So if you want to make a data visualization for time series data, it's common to use a line plot to show the progression over time instead of just having a bunch of points. So we'll give an example of making a line plot below. We're actually just going to generate some fake date data for this line plot. You don't have to worry too much about what this is doing, but we're creating some years within a given range and then just generating some random readings for those years and making a data frame out of it. So this bit of code is just creating some data for us to plot. The important part is the actual creation of the plot. All you have to do to make a line plot is take your data frame with the appropriate time series data, pass it to dot plot. For the X argument, you want to put the time variable. In this case, it is year. And for the Y, you want to put the readings. In this case, we just call the column readings. So when we run this, we will generate a line plot this time instead of a scatter plot, because we did not put kind equals scatter. So we'll scroll down and see our line plot has been drawn. Now, after you generate a nice looking plot, you might want to save it as an image file to use later or upload or do something else with it. So to close out this lesson, we'll just wrap up by showing how you can go about saving an image file in pandas. First, we're going to create a plot. This is just the same time series plot we used before. Then we have to extract the figure from the plot using this dot get figure. So we're going to save that as my fig. And then once you have the figure of the plot extracted, you can run this dot save fig function and then just specify where you want to save the file. So we're going to take my figure, run dot save fig on it, and we're going to save it to line plot example dot png. So when we run this, it will save the resulting plot as a PNG file in the working folder that we're in. And then we could take that plot and use it somewhere else. So to wrap up, Pandas has a lot of built-in plotting functionality that can allow you to make most of the basic plots you would probably want to make doing exploratory data analysis. If you need more advanced plotting features, you might need to use base matplotlib or some other dedicated plotting package instead of using Pandas, which is more about the data frame functionality and doing data organization and manipulation. Now that we've learned a variety of the basic tools for cleaning and exploring data in Python, the remainder of this guide is going to focus on statistics and predictive modeling in Python. So we'll get started on that next time with a lesson on basic descriptive statistics. If you found this video useful, you can drop a like, hit subscribe, and I will see you again next time.